Good day once again. I'm Chris Cordani, Dr. Jerome Corsi's producer. Dr. Corsi continues his work in Ohio on efforts to inform people about the dangerous voter roll algorithm there and in other U.S. states. For today's The Truth Central, we're going to play an interview he did with the Resistance Chicks Rumble channel, where he updates us on the dangerous potential of cyber interference as part of the Real Steel series on The Truth Central. You can find out more about this effort and how to donate to help Dr. Corsi, Andrew Paquette, Dr. Carlina Graves, and the team expose the threat and the real steel through the website gods5stones.com. That's gods5stones.com. Now, here's Dr. Jerome Corsi with the Resistance Chicks. Hey guys, welcome back to Resistance Chicks. We're your hosts, Leah and Michelle. We have the very honored privilege of having Dr. Jerome Corsi on the program here tonight. We've never had Dr. Corsi on the show, but of course we are no stranger to his work and to the mission that he's been out there telling truth in all areas um, of the, the truth movement right now and today. But specifically very near and dear to our heart and our region. He's working here in Ohio. He's here for the next week or so. And, you know, election fraud has been one of those topics, um, election integrity, that was hot for a couple of years and then it's kind of died down and I don't know where it's gone, but I'm so thankful for people like Dr. Corsi who choosing to be on the front lines and saying, I'm not giving up. We have to get to the bottom of this. We can never approach November until we address what happened in 2020. And you've got some shocking breaking news coming out of Ohio. You want this to go viral. You want everybody to share this. So guys, I need you to put your, your thinking caps on and your ears on and your share button ready to go I to get it. this out. We need to spread his message out and what he has found. So Dr. Corsi, welcome to the show. What have you found here in Ohio? Well, it's, first of all, it's great to be with you. I watched your show and know you for years, and I'm really honored and pleased to be with you. Uh, this this should be fun. Now, now the <laughs> what we found is that, and this is pretty shocking, that um, a, a gentleman called Andrew Piquette, who was with the New York study group looking at the New York uh, Board of Election voter registration data, the official data in New York State has found that the database is corrupted by having been encoded with an encryption scheme. Mm. What this means is encryption schemes are coding. You know, when you code something like our military wants to talk to the military in war, so they they can't give a message in English. They speak yeah. in code. Right. Code breaking, you know, the Enigma machine and we are hiding information in a code that only the people who create the code know. Now, okay, so it's a very complicated code. First of all, putting a code, a secret code into a, in a state board of election voter registration file is inherently criminal. Illegal, wrong. yes. Unless there are very limited purposes. You're trying to make it better, trying to make it more secure, but doesn't serve any of the legitimate purposes. What they do is they have a numbering scheme where they alter the State Board of Education, State Board of Election, I'm sorry, State Board of Election ID number, the voter ID number you get at the state is changed so it's no longer in relationship to when you're registered. Mm. Now that's, it may seem trivial, but it means that it opens up space in the the, the entire registry of voters. Yeah. So you create false votes, false voters, clones, or you can make up ghost voters. Yeah. And they, and they look like they're real. Okay. So I explain it this way. And it, it's very complicated in terms of code. Anthony or Andrew Paquette, when he broke this was really a genius operation that he found out there was a pattern and he broke the code. I mean, it usually takes years to break codes. Yeah. He had the intuition of it and he was right. And he gave all the ciphers. Now here's how it basically works in a simplified form. So people have children say, well, my first child, 
was, and my third child was really good with music. Well, people number their children in the order they're born. Right. Pretty sad. My first child is one born first. The second child is one born second. Third child is born, one born third. And, and people don't get confused about which child was born in which order. Yeah. I mean, certainly a mother is going to say, this was definitely the first one. Right. It was definitely the second one. I mean, it's just, it's, it's, it's natural. Okay. It's the way it should be. And the natural way when you do voter registration is if you come in and register and you're first, you should get voter ID number one. Sure. Mm -hmm. I mean, you get number two, you should get voter ID number two. Should be, you know, the independent variable should be when you registered and it should determine the number of voter ID you get at the state, which should be a straight line pattern. So you have a graph, you know, where you've got the the, the date you register on the x-axis, the y-axis is the number. It's just a straight line. Okay, now, that's not how they do it in New York. Hmm. In New York, they come in and they apply a numbering scheme to start out. So they say, um, well, your firstborn child is number one, but your secondborn child is number uh, is number tw uh, 12. Mm -hmm. And your third-born child is number 23. Mm, okay. Okay. Next child is um, 34. And then 45. Wow. And 56. Okay. Now, what I've done is I've just added 11 mm -hmm. to each number. Okay. So your first child is number, your second child is 12. Next child is 23, et cetera. And I say to you, well, you know, you say, wait a minute, I don't have 56 kids. I said, well, actually, according to New York, you do. Wow. Now, they may not all be your kids. There may be some other kids sorted in here between your kids. Mm. But your kids are still 1 and 12. And by the way, some of the kids we sorted in don't exist. Mm. We made them up. But they have numbers that look like they are real at the mm. State Board of Education, of Election because it's a real number yeah. and it falls in sequence and you can't tell that it's fake. Okay. If you look at it, it looks real. It's got all the right characteristics to be real. You'd have to go, if there's a million records in the state board of election voter records, you have to go out to all million people and say, is this you? Mm. Well, they don't do that. Okay. And so therefore in a record of, let's say a million voters, and Ohio has more than that, okay? In a record of a million voters, maybe 200,000 of them are fake. Wow, okay. And 1,000 of them, 50,000 of them are really good fakes. So these are, my, these are my primo cases, fake. Okay, now, it's not good enough just to create them. I gotta sort them back into the deck. Mm. So now it's like a card game trick where I'm saying, okay, you go to the casino, you're playing blackjack and you got a five card shoe they're dealing. And you think, well, it's gotta be five, five decks mixed in here. It's gotta be legit, except I've marked the cards and I'm dealing you the marked cards. Cause I know where I hid the fake voters. You don't know. Yeah. Because the algorithm gives them an algorithm identification that, that, that this one here is a fake vote. Mm. This one here is a fake vote, and it's systematic. Okay, now, why do I do this? And by the way, the Ohio Board of Election voter registration base has an algorithm built into it. Mm. It's been altered mathematically. Okay. Why do I do this? I do this because I... Uh, I'm running the election, and I want to be able to say, well, I my candidate is really behind. In fact, yeah. you know, uh, Kamala or Camila or however she says her <laughs> name is, is such a communist that I don't think communists would vote for her. Mm -hmm. Right. She, you know, she wants to free all the – open the jails, and she wants to let the criminals out. She mm -hmm. wants to rest you know, put the police in jail. Mm -hmm wants to you know do everything she can think of to destroy America. Mm -hmm. And she's probably going to get nobody voting for her. 
Okay, because, you know, who really wants this? Right. Mm -hmm. They change your children's sex. Uh, they're going to say, can't have a Bible. You're going to take your guns. Mm -hmm. You're going to do every vicious thing in the world. In fact, the Democratic Party has got the two worst candidates I've seen in a long time. Yeah. Since, since actually, since probably before you guys were politically <laughs> following things, since George Wallace and Curtis LeMay. The Democrat Curtis May wanted to bomb everybody. Mm. Okay. <laughs> he bombed Japan, bombed Germany, World War II. He wanted to drop nuclear weapons on Russia. He was he was the guy, the the bad general who wanted to bomb things in Dr. Strangelove. Okay. Okay. And George Wallace was, of course, a, a bigot segregationist. And the two of them were running for presidency in 1968 until George Wallace got shot. Mm. They were ugly candidates. Okay, these guys are just like these ugly candidates. Okay, now, since I got ugly candidates, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be saying, okay, as I get into the election, I'm going to start first. I, I, I know I, I'm the one. I'm the one. I'm CIA or National Security Agency, and I'm an operative, and I come in to this to the Ohio Board of Election, and I put a secret code. In, your, in the voter registration base that nobody knows is there. Mm -hmm. And I know it's there. So I start voting my secret votes. So I get some of them out. I said, let's give Kamala an edge. Let's give her some more. Okay, let's give her some more. And then if it comes out to be that she doesn't have enough to win, I stop counting and I give her as many as she needs. Okay. Come in at the end. Okay, so I'm controlling the election. Because I'm voting the fake ones. And the other people in the board of election don't know I'm doing it. If they see what I'm voting, it looks legit. And the uh, the, the amazing thing about this, see, in 2020, I, we saw all these anomalies. You saw mm -hmm. the ballots coming in the middle of the night, and they weren't folded. They didn't go through the machines. Right. But the election's certified. And that's what I couldn't figure out. Mm -hmm. Now what I realize is since they created false votes, they hid them and they're using them. They can use somebody's voter ID number to make sure they request a mail-in ballot. That number, which looks real, that that number votes the ballot, goes through the machine, looks real. And since they requested it and voted it, it's certifiable. Mm -hmm. And it looks real. In fact, if the other board of election members look at it, they won't tell it's fake. Mm. Because it looks, all the characteristics of it are right. Mm. Okay, except that I made it up. Mm -hmm. Okay, now, what the Democrats are planning to do here is steal the election. Mm. And so with this scheme in place, and I've found these algorithms, we found them in about, so far, 13 states. Wow. Okay, what they can do is, if I, I'm a political scientist. Okay, my PhD at Harvard is in political science. I've been, I'm, I was born and raised in Cleveland, Ohio. I went to St. Ignatius High School, and I went to Case Western Reserve for my undergraduate work. I'd written three books as an undergraduate, by the way, as an undergraduate. And so therefore, when about 15 years old, my professors would say, come on, we're going to, this is about 19, in the 1960s, way before you guys were born, they would say, let's go downtown to WJW television station and we're going to, we're going to call the election. Oh, wow. So, they go, so we, I was, went down there. My job was, I was too young to be on TV. You can't have a 15 year old calling the election. So the professor called the election, but I did the analytics. Oh, wow. Cause I knew the precincts and knew who was, where the votes were. And I could say, okay, this candidate, has got to draw this many votes out of Cuyahoga County, out of these precincts. They don't get them, they're in trouble. Mm -hmm. Or if they get more than that, they're doing very well. Mm. So about 10% of the vote comes in, I'm saying, I think this candidate's going to have a difficulty. Mm. About 25% of the vote in, I can say, I think this candidate's going to lose. Mm. Or I think this one's going to be too close to call. Because I can profile the election. I right? know how voting patterns occur. I know this rural counties in Ohio are most of the counties, and they're going to come in late. Mm -hmm. 
So, you know, they're the red part of Ohio. The only blue part of Ohio is the cities. Now, now, does that so far, does that all shock you? No. No. You know, it, doesn't, you, it doesn't shock because you expect them to cheat. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. I mean, it would shock everybody else, but like, no, like, I mean, we, we, are, we've been around the block a few times now. Like we've had 2020, we had 2022. You're used to being lied to. Yeah. This, this vaccine will make sure you don't get the disease, except it didn't. Right. right. The buildings were, came down 9-11 because airplanes hit them, except for building up <laughs> exactly. that which no airplane hit. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So what you're saying is that this is happening here in Ohio and they have an algorithm, they found the algorithm that um, makes it so that they can put fake ghost voters in between these, in between like the sequential numbers that normal people would register as voters. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Oh, wow. And, And you won't know they're there. Okay. I'll know they're there. Okay. Even if them you couldn't tell they were there even when i vote them they'll look legitimate wow okay so now what i can do is okay let's 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 take a bigger big vision of what the democrats are doing so first of all they got joe biden uh-huh. well we all know joe we see now joe biden is mentally incompetent right okay and by the way all this we have created a website which is gods five stones.com mm. That's G O D S, no apostrophe. And five, you spell out five, F I V E S T O N E S. That's our 501c3. We're getting donations. But all that I'm talking about is explained on that website. Great. Because we're talking about the argument that's going to, I think, be a breakthrough argument that will unify what everybody's got out there on voter integrity. Great. Mm-hmm. And this, this is a winning argument. I love it. The others were designed to be a losing argument. Okay, so now I've got Biden, and he's polling so badly that I can't say he has a chance to win. Mm-hmm. So we got to get rid of Biden. Yeah. So Obama comes in, and, and and Nancy Pelosi, and they get rid of Biden, and they decide, okay, we're going to have Kamala. Mm-hmm. Kamala, I mean, you know, just just hand her a microphone, and she's going to defeat herself. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, besides. How she entered politics wasn't particularly pretty. No, right, right. Sleeping her way into politics and her history, and she's considered to be very sleazy by every. No, and I can't find anybody who likes Kamala. No, not no. E- no, not even the Democrats. No, they don't like Kamala, and they get this guy Wall. Well, this guy Wall was George Floyd, and he was, mm-hmm. you know, stolen honor. This is a guy who ran away from going into combat. Yeah, right. Well, I mean, this, this is a disgrace. Yeah. Okay, so the Democrats don't care that their candidates are horrible because they, they're they almost picking horrible co- candidates to say, look, we can pick, we can be, we can elect anybody. <laughs> right. It's in your face is what you're saying. They're just yeah, they're well, showing us what they're doing. It's definitely in your face. What are you seeing um, in the election integrity uh, front on trying to to fix this is it is all all we can do right now in Ohio is to shine light on it. We can fix it, but let's get into it a little bit more deeply because I'm just getting going with what okay. they're doing. Okay, now I'm a political scientist, and I say I've got the control of this, and so therefore I'm going to elect Kamala and I'm going to elect Wall, even though nobody likes them. Right, and and so I come to you. Today is August, elections in November. I say, look, um, Mr. Obama, since you're in charge here of the deep state, and since you want your fourth term, and these are your people that have your fourth term, mm-hmm. how do you want the election to go? Do you want to win by 1%? Do you want to win by 3%? Mm. Or 5%? Do you want him to be ahead through the whole time, or do you want you want Kamala to be making a comeback? Mm. You want to oh, say she's third at the end? You tell me what the way you want it to look. Wow. Because I'll, I'm going to run the election now. I, I okay. mean, I've been running election simulations for 45 or 50 years on okay. computer. So since I've got all the data, I say, well, I'm just going to run the election. 
And I start going in and making it look like in my computer, people are voting. And then I vote some of my fake cases with keep the numbers close. Mm -hmm. Oh, I can say, Kamala, look at all the gaslighting they're doing. Kamala is really get, catching on. Oh, mm -hmm. well, Trump doesn't know how to speak to a woman. Right. He doesn't deal with a woman of color. Right. Of course, I'm not sure what color she is. <laughs> other question. And, uh, you know, so, but he, he's thrown off balance. And Kamala is heading in the polls. All gaslight. Yeah. All CIA talking points. Sure. sure. Kamala Harris couldn't draw 15 people to a, a rally if she gave the, away money. Right, exactly. <laughs> I mean, do you really want to sit through a Kamala Harris no, speech? No one does. It's, yeah, it's mind numbing. I only, I only stay for the clips and the, and the outtakes of how idiotic she sounds. Would you rather go to the dentist or hear Kamala Harris? I love my dentist, yes. I would definitely <laughs> rather go to the dentist. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a painful experience. Yeah, so, they, so they're going to try to make it look like this horrible, awful candidate that nobody wants to vote for, and the black community knows that she's just pretending to patronize them. It's going to they want to try to make it look like she is going to have to get more votes than Joe Biden somehow with this algorithm, right? Yeah, she's going to get. So they're going to make it. They're going to start. Uh, okay, so I say, look, don't worry about it. I'm CIA. Um, you know, I know elections. So I'm just going to start running it right now. It's August. Mm -hmm. And I run the election. And I, you said I wanted 3%. And I wanted to come on strong in the afternoon. And I want to surge at the end. So I'm here voting it. And I program the votes exactly like you want it to be. Okay. I make it turn out the way you want it to be. Voting the false ones I need, to, along with the others that I invent. And, the, and nobody has actually voted. Mm. Okay, now when they come to vote, I throw their votes away. Mm. I don't need them. I don't need any of them. They think they're voting. Mm -hmm. They aren't. I've already voted the election. Mm. That's why I'm confident I'm going to win. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, in fact, my real candidate, Barack Obama, was... I, of somebody who was weekend at Bernie's. Mm -hmm. They're actually dead. Right. And they're, they're a bit of a candidate by AI. Mm -hmm. So they're, we'll be there about AI. They're dead. Because we don't need no stinking president, mm -hmm. Obama and Deep State. They're going to run the country anyway. These people are actors. That's good. Mm -hmm. And the election is a Truman show. Mm -hmm. Think you're voting. Oh, we got to get registration up. Mm -hmm. Got to make sure the voter roll is squeaky clean. Mm. Got to get okay. So I'm, I'm looking at here with the, the news clips, and I'm seeing that um, that uh, this is from the Akron Beacon Journal. You see, I'm in I'm in Ohio. I'm going to stay in Ohio until I make this national story. This is Akron Beacon Journal. Mm. Good. This is from, uh, and of course, I don't think they could print this paper any smaller unless they hand it out bifocals. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and so I got over here this. Yeah, Aaron Glenn writes the story. LaRose. So we got now Frank LaRose, our state. Yes. Very state hero. Has referred evidence of suspected election violations to prosecutors in 20 counties, including Franklin, Hamilton, Summit, and Stark. Says, quite, we take every allegation of wrongdoing in our election seriously. Whether it's a fake signature on a petition, a fraudulent voter registration form, or a stolen vote. Mm. Sounds good. Yeah. And he's cleaning it up. So we got all we've taken all these precautions. We got election watchers. We got people in the poll. We're gonna be we're gonna be running the cleanest election ever. We've thrown 150 people off. Frank LaRose is only catching the people they don't care about. Right. Uh, they weren't gonna vote any of those people. They just made him think. He's a good Boy Scout. Right. They're making a fool of him. Mm -hmm. Laughing at him. Because he didn't, he can't find the 300,000 fakes they created. Wow. They can find them. Mm -hmm. He doesn't even know they exist. He'll say, our voter roll is squeaky clean. Yeah, except for the algorithm in it. Mm. Okay, now, 
I've, I've given him a chance of saying now, you know, Mr. Rose, if you'll if you'll work with us, let's show the algorithm. Mm. Let us come. All I'm wanting, I'm not saying anybody used the algorithm. I'm not saying anybody stole the election. I'm saying Kraken. Mm-hmm. I'm not challenging. <laughs> I'm not challenging a, set, a certified election. I'm just saying I'm going to show you the algorithm. You know how I can show you the algorithm. Well, okay, so you get Marion County over, or Huron County over by Toledo. And it's a very small rural county, mostly Republican. And they don't mess with it. Mm-hmm. So you come in first, you get state voter ID number one. Okay. Come in second, you get number two. It's a straight line. Okay. So they don't mess with that. Now we get over to Youngstown. And the county's over by Youngstown, and we do a scattergram. You know, we plot each vote. Mm-hmm. They're all in one quadrant of the graph. Okay. As if they all registered only on these one period of time. Wow. Okay. That's impossible. Wow. An algorithm threw them in that quadrant. Okay. Oh. Mathematical formula. These are the ones where the fakes are. Okay. Okay, these are the ones where they're going to, because these are counties that are more blue, they're bigger, there's more Democrats, we can find more Democrats to pull out sure. to vote. Sure. Okay, and they'll look real. Now, LaRose doesn't know that's there. Mm. I know it's there. Okay. And I'm going to vote it. And so, therefore, when I'm voting it, I'm swinging the election and he thinks it's happening in real time because right. he's, but he's squeaky clean. I got him out there mm-hmm. running my PR. Ah. Tell him I'm honest. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm not honest. I'm a bad actor. I'm rigging this thing for mm-hmm. Kamala and Wall, who wouldn't have a chance of being dog catchers mm-hmm. elected fairly. Mm-hmm. Nobody would vote for them. Okay, now what this means is that the Democratic Party has decided they don't need elections anymore. Right. They're going to run one and let you think you're voting. Mm -hmm. And then at the end, it's going to be very disappointing. So they did it in Europe. And they said, okay, Le Pen is winning the first vote and the right is gaining in Parliament. Right. Right. Well, but then we have the real election. Oh, the left surged. Yes, I saw that. The left surged. And in Venezuela, oh, we stopped counting and the left surged. They always manage to surge like in the middle of the night and when no one's looking. <laughs> yeah. Well, but you go into the polls. I call, I'm calling up Europe and Italy and, and France and saying, are there people lining up at the polls? Dr. Corsi, there's nobody in the poll. Yeah. Wow. There is yeah. no surge. There's no voters surging. Mm-hmm. It's the computers surging. Right, right, right. And the election's in the computers. Okay, so what I'm saying is this is the most perfect method for cheating, and Frank LaRose won't catch it. Mm. We're going to give him an opportunity for a few days next week to say, do the right thing. Yeah. Got experts, got nine or ten experts who already looked at the data. I, I've got the data in Ohio. I don't need him to let us see it. We already have it. Wow, oh, okay. I've already proven there's an algorithm in here. I've already got NSA qualified people who are ready to come forward and say, Ohio's rigged. Mm. Put that in their stationery. Mm. Okay. Now, that means that LaRose is going to let the election occur with a, you're going into a casino where Mm. I know you're going to lose. Wow. Yeah. As I'm dealing, you know, my cards and you don't know it. You'll keep doubling down. I'll keep getting all your money. Mm-hmm. And if you knew you were going to that kind of a casino, you'd never go into it. Right. But Rose told you it was safe. Okay, now I'm giving Lowe's a chance to redeem himself. And all we want to do is to look at the current database and validate that we're right which we can do anyway, because we have the data. Okay. I can, sh- I can prove this. So I'm, I'm the one here now. We are 
playing with a an analytics and with proof that we know is indisputable. Just like when I wrote the book on Kennedy and I had optical density measurements of the x-rays from David Mantic, mm -hmm. my co-author, we knew Kennedy was shot twice from the front because we could see it in the x-rays. Right, right. Nobody's argued with that book. It's, in, it's indisputable. Okay, now you see what I'm doing is I'm going to show the country that we are headed into the most rigged election in history. And that this is the, the next time they won't need to bother with voting. Wow. Those who run a movie of a few people voting and they'll give you the results. <laughs> right. <laughs> so everybody stay home. <laughs> You've already voted. Yeah. You know, but you already voted. We already have your votes in the machine. You never voted. Nobody ever did anything. The machines did it all. Are you getting this? Yeah. So how did you? Who? How did they find the the co code? Go back to uh, the guy who cracked the code in Ohio. Yeah. Well, this Anthony, it was same guy Anthony Paquette. What he did is you run scattergrams. You see how the voters are distributed, and if it's honest, there'll be a straight line. Okay. If it's not, there's a mathematical formula that's put those votes somewhere they don't belong. Okay. That's manipulation. Yeah. Now, I know, might not know the exact code that did that. I might not know the exact mathematical formula. We know it for New York. Okay. So exactly how New York was done. And it's complicated. Mm -hmm. It was on God's five st stones. Stone. Okay, yeah. okay. You can read the paper and you can see my videos on this. Okay, but next week, we're going to tell the country that Ohio's rigged. Mm. And I'm going to start going on some of the daily radio shows and TV shows. I've started mm -hmm. doing town halls. Great. There'll be a national media. I'm going to stay in Ohio long enough to be interviewed. I'm going to be here as a presence to write Substacks, great information out. Work with more radio shows like yours. Come back on your show, and as we develop this, the nation. Then I'm going to next say, okay, well, they want me next in Tulsa. Mm. Almost got the problem. Then they want me in Pennsylvania. Then we've got New Jersey, and we've got Hawaii. Hawaii added codes; they didn't even try to hide them. Wow. Okay, now, what this means is that I'm not, when I'm, at, I'm I can't be faulted for saying that uh, uh, challenging an election that's certified, I'm not an insurrectionist. Mm -hmm. I'm just asking to look and see if it's there. Mm. I'm asking politically to look and see if it's there. Now, what will the people have to start demanding? Sure. Why are we voting? And, and next week when you see the scattergrams and we start explaining this to you, you're going to realize how this is a scheme in which the Democrats have decided they don't need votes. Yeah. They don't want votes. They want power. Exactly. So, so we're looking over, yeah, we're we are looking on the, at this the God's Five paper. This Jones is here and the Andrew uh, Paquette paper. These these um, I'm going to pull this up for you guys to see. These screen grabs that you have of the actual row numbers and the record <laughs> gaps and you and of uh, literally 111, 111. It kind of um, reminds me of fractional reserve banking, mm -hmm. where <laughs> you deposit ten dollars and they can lend out a hundred. That's mm -hmm. kind of what I'm seeing here. Am I wrong? No. You're not. In fact, I'm going to pull up the paper now, and if you'll let me share, I'm going to show you a couple of things that are really kind of interesting about it. Hold on, let me just get it myself up here. 
Okay, what? one second. Let me make it so that you can share. While you're reading, while you're finding that, I'll, I'll just read off the fraudulent records here. It says that false voters were introduced into the voter rolls. Records belonging to false voters were covertly tagged via an algorithm for easy retrieval when needed. Absentee ballots were requested by false registrants. Ballots and ballot envelopes were gathered at central collection points. Fraudulently generated ballots were cast in fraudulently obtained ballot envelopes. False voter records were updated to reflect false votes. And after certification, false voter records were manipulated to disguise their purpose and their history. In fact, the false voters were then purged from the records. Mm, They're wow. gone. They're wow. gone. Wow. You can't find them anymore. They're gone. Okay, wow. so this is a, I'm going to get this paper up here for a second. I'm going to. Well, I'm going to explain to you exactly what they do so you can see how devious this is. It's actually quite ingenious. It's actually quite brilliant. But well, it's sure. devious. It's You'll devious. never have to campaign again if you can just, you know, I think it was like in Venezuela, it's always kind of by like a, a mar, like a very small margin, 51% or something like that. Uh, supposedly they, they, get they make it really close Trump you know they for, supposedly they just kept finding votes for Biden up to like uh, okay it's just 72,000 and swung an election mm -hmm. and he's now elected so the, it's got to be you know it's got to be hidden so well that it's almost impossible to find that's right that's right and even when you see them they look legit yeah okay so LaRose will come out and say, this was the fairest election ever mm. as he got fooled. Mm. And I'm trying to prevent him from getting fooled. Mm. Good. I'm giving him a choice. I'm saying, look, Frank, we'll make you a hero. Just let the MAGA movement see the truth. Yeah. Let them show you the truth. Sure. Let them show you where your blind spot is. Good. Okay. Mm. Now, I'm going to share here. Did you give me permission to share? I did give you permission to share. Okay, good. Now, I'm pulling this up right here and sharing it. Now, you should be seeing a table here. Okay, this is a table in Andrew Paquette's paper. Now, I want you to pay attention to this middle column here, which says CID sort. There's a county identification sort. Okay. The way I do this and the way I skew the numbers is, first of all, um, I the, the county numbers come in one through 39. Okay. Okay, and so just take a sequence here. Number eight, I give number eight, 20,307,396. Okay. The next number, nine, is not 397. Mm. It's 20,308,507. Mm which is exactly 1,111 more than 7396. Mm. You just do the add there, you can see it right away. And in fact, between nine and 10, there's another gap of 1,111 votes and the same between 10 and 15. Mm. So those are votes, like literally over a thousand vote difference, but it's exact. Yes, it's exact. They, they call those rep units, repeat units. There are special mathematical formulas used they're frequently, they're used in ciphers. They're used okay. in, okay, now, so you can see that my my state IDs sequentially have gaps. But now if you look at the first column, when I order the CID, the county identification numbers in sequence, my state IDs all increment by one. Wow. Because in the gaps over here, I've inserted records from other places. Okay. Okay, so there are records, there are 1,111 records added in there, but they're added in there from other places in the database. Uh -huh. And then I go along and I'm suddenly there's number 17 is minus 27,000. I, I throw one off. Yeah just to make it so it's harder to figure out. Okay. And then when I get to 1,112 in row 20, I'm breaking it and it may take CID numbers from a different county. Okay. And add them in with this number. Okay, now when you go to the third column and you do it by the registration date, you see the first date is 1911. Mm -hmm. 
1954, and that's it all in order. The CID numbers are not in sequence, nor are the state mm. board of election voter ID numbers. Right. Because that was the purpose. I'm, I disassociated them. From I get they, it. Yeah. That's why they show up in all in one quadrant. And that means I can. I get, yeah. Well, you've so got to look at these numbers and I, and I've, I'm looking at your chart right now and the the sequential numbers um in the if you're the third column when you see you know the last is 51 52 53 all of these registration dates are all over the board right and and so but they but the the sorting number that they put in as your voter id number basically right yeah. um is 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 completely it, it has nothing to do with anything. So, I mean, I, I don't see how Frank LaRose can deny this. How how in the world can you have a s sequential numbers uh, for people's ID numbers if their their dates of birth are all over the place unless somebody is randomly putting in fake people? And, and this is not random. This is a systematic okay. alteration of the database by formulas. Mm. The formulas... And they're systematically applied rigorously. And, and, and so the, the point is that somebody born in 1911, wait a minute, you mean somebody born in 1911 is still alive to be born? I was thinking the same thing, no way. There are records in here from 1850. You're oh kidding. People registered in 1850. Well, I guarantee you, nobody who registered to vote in New York in 1850 is still alive to vote. Uh, they're long yeah. Wow. But yet, but yet they have a state voter ID that looks real. Mm -hmm. And you won't know that that's a fake mm -hmm. unless you begin a forensic search of that record. And that one would not be, that would be a fake, but it wouldn't be in my A list. Okay. Be too easy to see. My A list is going to include something different than that. I'm going to show you what my A list looks like. Okay, and then we got to quit sharing this. And I'm going to go over here to um, get some other things over here on the my mail over here. And I'm going to go to Anthony Paquette. Hold on. And I'm going to show you what the real good stuff looks like, the primo stuff. Okay, and hold on. We find Anthony. I got so many here. We As go. As you're finding that, I'll read this. The repunts. The the constants of the spiral pattern are numbers known as repunts. A repunt is a number of two or more digits composed of repeats of the of the number one. The numbers one 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 or one 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 one. Again, keep. Um, they're all repunts in a CID sort. Each group of ten COB uh, ID numbers uh, is bounded by a repunt that ends in two. The numbers used to designate the last record in a block are n tags. The algorithm is based on repunts and numbers related to repunts. The most commons are 1,000, you know, 111 repunts plus one, like 1,100 plus two. To understand how repunts are used and the complexity of the overall pattern created by the algorithm, one must understand how it is constructed. And so there's actually a, a cipher to construct this. Yes. It's called the Caesar cipher or a linear cipher. Well, I'll show you that in a minute because the Caesar cipher is how they sort them back into the database. Okay. Okay. And it, it's also ingenious. Wow. But again, okay, now I'm going to show you this right here. And I'm going to share my screen again because this is the kind of records that we create in this kind of a database. So, so hold on. Let me get this here and I'm going to share. Okay. And so... I'm going to share this one. Okay, now here's a record. You should see a record here. And this is a uh, Rachel M. Okay. Well, Rachel M is in County 074, which is Herkimer County. And she registered on 2820. And um, actually, she's active. And uh, you've got the Assembly District 118. All this data looks good. And there's her signature. You can see it's electronic and it's pixels. Okay, you can see the pixels. Okay. Uh, here's another Rachel M. Well, she registered 
First Rachel M was 2820. This one registered on 2720 the day before. Oh, wow. Well, the Rachel A. Kennedy man, and she registered, and she's in 7 2 as well, Harkomer. And she's Assembly District 118. Okay, but her registration date is different. But it looks, it looks legit. Mm -hmm. But her signature is electronic and it identically the same matches. Same signature. Pick same pixels. And, and by the way, wow. okay, well, here's another Rachel M. She also came in on 2720. No way. Okay, and now she's in District 73. Well, these others were in District 72. So I guess she moved the last wow. 20 years. It came on in. And by the way, this was a du this was a duplicate. It was purged. Wow. wow. Okay. And it, so it's inactive at the moment. Okay. But again, same signature. So Rachel turns out to have about 32 different registrations. Wow. And I'm not sure Rachel's real. <laughs> um yeah <laughs> okay that's rachel okay and so that's part of what they can do with this mm -hmm. and i'll try to find one other part that is kind of fun on it it's a complicated scheme sure and and paquette really did brilliant work to find it i mean the guy is a genius and uh he did find it i credit him with having done some remarkable, remarkable work. Okay, but they actually got real clever. There is, if I can find it here in the paper, hold on, let me see if I can't just find it quick. There's a guy named um, Marquette. There's an identity theft guy in New York and New Jersey that was prosecuted, who was very famous. Well, they, they gave him 32 registrations in the database. Wow, He's wow. He's a, a famous, he's a famous criminal. And so they put him in the database and then they registered everybody in his family with the same name. Wow. Just as a joke. Oh my gosh. Just to say, look how they're clever. laughing at us. Mm -hmm. They're laughing at us. They're laughing at us. Okay. And th this, this is the problem is that, you know, and they purge the records. Well, we would have to go out and canvas all these records in order to find out which ones were not real. Because since they appear to have real state ID voter numbers, yeah, they look real. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Dr. Corsi, in, in all of this that we're learning that you have been showing us, there's so much more. It seems like there's mountains of data that could be gone through, that could be showcased, that could be um, exposed. Yeah. What is the what is the theme that we can take away from this? And then what are we supposed to do, the people? How can we help you? Well, I, I think that the we're, we're going to find we already know that there are algorithms. There's this you know manipulation in 13 states. Mm. We can prove it in 13 states. I'm beginning to find every state to look at. Yeah, and I'm finding it overseas. Wow. This is already gone international. People are talking about the story in the EU right now that say, and the same thing happened in the EU, it served in the EU and in the same patterns and the, the, it's control of the, of the false records of the database through codes being written mm -hmm. in within the central command. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what it does is it explains everything. Everybody's got all the voter integrity projects. So they have found data that makes sense. Mm -hmm. All these are artifacts of this. And what it means is if we let them get away with this, we'll never have another election. You'll never right. vote again. Yeah. Even today, I don't know that your votes mean anything. Yeah. Because they're, they're disregarding them. They, they override them. Yeah. They're laughing at us. <laughs> they and, are. And, yeah. And, and I mean, now that we've found it, we get the last laugh because what they're doing is criminal. That's right. This is, this is traitorous. And it's got to stop. This is satanic. Amen. And that's that's what it boils down to. And I love that, you know, your website is called um, God's Five Stones, God's Five Stones dot com. I've been showing that periodically throughout um, the discussion here today because we are it, it does kind of feel like a David and Goliath. But when yeah. you talk about David and Goliath, I was actually just reading this story the other day in the Bible. 
David seems like the little guy, mm-hmm. but they what what they don't understand is that Goliath is the little guy because yeah. we have God on our side, and well, see, it the, isn't a fair fight. The, the, Satan, first of all, Satan is not human, and Satan lies. Right. This is all lying, and the one thing that Satan is denied is the God's God's instruction, God's intervention, God's grace. Yeah, we get we get intuition from God. We get instruction from God. Satan's deprived of that. Yeah. So Satan always gets these plans that are really clever, and you know, really we're gonna we're gonna rig the election. We're gonna have algorithms. We're gonna vote people who don't exist. We're gonna elect people. We don't need any voting. Well, they forgot to tell you all that you don't that your voting means nothing to them. Right. Well, I mean that's not okay with me. Mm-hmm. I'm sure that's not okay with you. Yeah. I'm sure that's not okay with your children, right. our grandchildren. We want our votes to mean something. Yeah. They say to us, well, you know, we don't know what gender is, and, you know, you've got to respect what these people feel. Well, wait a minute. You're not talking about my child. Yeah. You're not taking my precious daughter. Right. And meaning she can't ever have a child because you destroyed her sex organs and some right. kind of. Yeah, satanic idea. Not my daughter. Yeah. Not my son. You know, and I'm, I'm, I'll fight for them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You keep your hands off of them. Right. You know, what do you mean I can't have a Bible? Right. What do you mean I can't have a gun? What do you mean the guy comes in and robs my house, I go to jail because I depend on my family? Wait a minute. No, you go to jail. You're the criminal. I refuse to take their plea deal. Come on. And then they didn't indict me. I said, you guys are the criminals. Yeah. Well, that's what we got to point out. They're the criminals. Amen. And that's in what it end, boils down to. In the end, God wins. God did not create this experience to lose. Right. God's, God's already won. Yes. He we has. Demand- he's not done with America. He's yeah. not, not done with this voting system. He's not done with our um, democratic, um, or excuse me, our, our constitutional republic. Yeah. He's not done with us. Well, I, I'm ending everything with, I do with Second Chronicles seven fourteen because we bear responsibility here. Yeah, we, we got we got we enjoyed the prosperity of America. We let our guard down. We let God be taken out of the schools. We let babies be killed in the womb in yeah. massive numbers since Roe v. Wade. Right. We, you know, God wins. Doesn't mean we win. I mean, they take the platform out of the GOP platform about. The right to life is essential. A lot of people fall for that. Yeah. And God's not happy. Well, those people, they're going to have a consequence for doing that. Yeah. God wins, but doesn't mean God, God's got God, God's got his own agenda winning. And God winning is God's going to restore God's law. Amen. No, I love that so much. Thank you. And I honestly, guys, this is brand new to us. And we are going to take some time. I'm going to take some time, and I'm going to go over this the, the this paper here. And I think we all should because what is found. This is the New York uh, data rolls by Andrew uh, Paquette. This paper, and what it is showing is that they have created new voters. These are fake voters. The numbers don't line up. They well, the numbers line up. That's the problem. Is that the the registration date? Those dates are all over the place. And then the actual registration number, it goes in sequential order. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten. And you could be born, you could be registered to vote in 1850 or 1950. And you can, and, and this paper shows screenshots of these voter rolls and shows that these people are put in there on purpose, manufactured. It's there. It's right in front of your face. And this, this, these algorithms, you want to know how that they, how Donald Trump got 10 million more votes in 2020 and still lost and still lost. These are highly sophisticated algorithms. And we've been trying to discuss, I mean, we've been trying to crack the code. Andrew cracked the, co- cracked the code here in uh, New York. And I guess they're cracking it here in Ohio in 13 states. So we all have to do our due diligence. We all have to do our own research. Read the paper for yourself and and share it with your friends. Share this interview with your friends. Watch uh, Jerome's other uh, interviews. And we look forward to having you back on as you guys begin to uncover more and more of this. 
Absolutely. So they can go to five God's five stones.com and donate. I'm going to pull this up for everybody be, to be able to see right now. Go to the bottom of the page there. There's multiple pl- ways to donate and they will be able to further your mission in this. Right, Dr. Corsi? Yes, I, I really want to thank you guys. I mean, I, I've always loved your show. I've admired what you've done and you've done it again. <laughs> well, that's an honor. I appreciate it. In the it. midst of some technical difficulties, it always happens when something's big. Something's big, and we, you guys, today we had some technical dif- difficulties like we've never actually had before, uh, brand new. And so I think that this is the this is one of those things that um, w- you know you're over the target when it's like spiritual censorship. Amen. Yeah, I mean- Amen. Doctor Corsi, would you end us in prayer, please? Yes, well, I I pray, God, that we come before you, your throne, and we ask in humility that you are sovereign Mm. and that you rule Mm. and that you enlighten our minds Mm. with the truth so we may send these devils back to hell where they belong. (laughs) Along with all their woke ideology, along with all their criminal activity. Yes. They're lying, they're cheating. We want to restore America for you, God, for your grace, for your glory. And we pray and we know with confidence that in the end, in fact, already you have won. Amen. Just ask, Spirit of Second Chronicles 7, 14, that you forgive us. Mm. Yes. Not being more diligent mm. in defending your law. Mm. We pray that we will go forward from here with the angels and forces of your might to send these demons to hell where they belong. Come on. Lord God, we are your servants. We are here to glorify you. And with Jesus' blood, we ask that we have victory mm. for future generations, for the unborn. Come on. Amen. For freedom for the future generations. And that we have done our role as faithful servants in fulfilling your commands. In thy name, Jesus, we pray that we will succeed through your guidance and grace. Thank you, God. Amen. 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 I know I speak for thousands and thousands of other people across the nation and across the world. We are very thankful that God has placed a man of God like you in this position to do this research, to bring these things to us. And we just thank you for all of your years of service to us and to um, to making sure that when we go before God and cast our vote, that that vote actually counts. And it's not sullied and it's not watered down. So I want to thank you for all that you're doing. Continue to be a voice. Guys, you can follow Dr. Corsi on thetruthcentral.com. You can follow him on Twitter, on YouTube, anywhere. Um, I think he's probably on all social media platforms by now. But Dr. Corsi, thank you for coming on. We'd love to have you back on, especially as this progresses. And we are going to be helping to further this message and get it out and help it go viral. So thank you for coming on our show. I'll be happy to come back anytime you ask. Thank you. Sounds great. All right, you guys, remember, it's not just a conspiracy theory if it's actually the truth. We'll see you next time right here from resistancechicks.com. God bless.